Hello and welcome to another TLDR UK video. On the 6th of May, Londoners will once again head to the polls in the all-important London mayoral elections. Alongside 25 Assembly members, the main focus will inevitably be on the election of a new mayor. Having been voted in back in 2016, all eyes are on the incumbent, Sadiq Khan. So in this video, we'll take a look at Khan's mayorship so far, the issues facing all mayoral candidates, and whether London is about to vote him back in for another term. If you like our videos, then be sure to subscribe to the channel to get updates on topics like this. In fact, we even have a video coming out on Sunday where we interview YouTuber and London mayoral candidate Max Fosh to find out more about the process of running for mayor and his attitudes towards politics and the position. Patrons have access already, but make sure you subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when that video is released. Anyway, before we delve into the 2021 race, it's worth looking at how the system actually works in these elections. The mayor is ultimately elected based on a supplementary vote system, where each voter has two votes, a first and second preference. If any given candidate manages to receive more than 50% of all first preference votes, then they're immediately elected. If no one secures a majority, all candidates barring the top two based on first preferences are eliminated. The second preference votes of those who first voted for a now eliminated candidate are now added to the count of the two candidates still in the running. Whichever of these top two has the highest combined total first and second preference votes wins the election. It's through this system that Sadiq Khan, London's current mayor, was elected in 2016. As mayor, Khan has brought in some key policies all across London. Under Sadiq Khan, Transport for London froze fares on public transport for five years and introduced so-called hopper fares, which allow people to hop on and off unlimited numbers of buses within the course of an hour while only paying one fare. Khan was also instrumental in developing and bringing into force ultra-low emission zones in the centre of London, banning the most polluting vehicles in that area. Khan's tenure as mayor hasn't all been plain sailing though, with a number of controversies during his time in City Hall. The first revolving around Transport for London, and the second policing. When it comes to Transport for London, as you can expect, the pandemic has really knocked a gaping hole in its budget. So much so that at one point, the government began threatening to seize back control over TfL if things weren't brought under control. To Khan's credit, however, prior to the pandemic, the budget was stable, something that can't be said when Johnson left City Hall. One big transport problem extends beyond COVID, though. Originally planned for a 2018 opening, Crossrail still isn't fully opened and isn't expected to be until 2022, with the budget for the project spiralling out of control. Now, this project was approved in 2008, long before Khan took office, but some do lay these latest delays and budget increases at his feet. On the policing front, the role of the Mayor of London comes with a degree of oversight for policing. The Mayor is ultimately given the same powers as locally elected police and crime commissioners in other parts of the country. The controversy here being that under Khan, crime, and specifically knife crime, has climbed, and climbed fast. In fact, homicide rates hit a 10-year high in 2019, having risen rapidly over the last few years. Then in 2020, the Office for National Statistics reported that crime levels in London were rising five times higher than the rest of England. Killings involving a knife, for instance, climbed a further 28%, from 67 murders in 2018 to 86 in 2019. Drawing criticism for the steep rising crime in the capital, Khan highlighted that police numbers being cut is a governmental issue, and that it's the government, not the mayor, who's cutting funding for the police and cutting the numbers of bobbies on the beat. However, this immediately exposes him to further criticism about the millions more being spent on his public office. In 2015-16, the mayor's office had a budget of £3.8 million. In 1920, that controversially rose to £6 million. So if that's the good and bad of what Khan's done in the last few years, what does he have lined up if he gets re-elected? Well, Khan has set himself the target of bringing in 10,000 new council homes, alongside the creation of the Right to Buy Back Fund, which will buy back council houses sold under the Right to Buy scheme. 
He also plans a charter for on-demand work in order to drive up standards. Specifically, in the light of the Uber gig economy case that ruled that Uber drivers were entitled to certain protections, typically afforded only to employees. Khan has also pledged to establish a drugs commission for London to examine the evidence on the harms of drugs, support services and prevention, the effectiveness of current laws, as well as tackling the root causes of crime. According to The Guardian, Khan is receptive to the idea of decriminalising the use of cannabis if the commission puts forward that idea. A source close to the mayor emphasised that nothing is off the table in the context of what is best for public health and keeping Londoners safe, with Portugal being floated as an example of how policy around drug use can be changed for the better of society. The issue being that from a policy standpoint, this would put him at odds with his own party's leader and the law. Specifically, Starmer has come out against liberalisation, and the mayor doesn't actually have any power to do anything about it. So far in this video, we've only discussed Khan, and he's obviously not the only one in contention. In fact, this year's ballot contains more names than any other year, featuring notable candidates from the Green Party's co-leader Sean Berry to Count Binface. However, in part due to the voting system, only two candidates have a real shot at gaining the mayorship. London's Sadiq Khan and the Conservatives' Sean Bailey. Sean Bailey has, it's safe to say, come under quite a bit of fire from opponents and his own party. In fact, the FT reported that senior Conservative Party figures and donors urged the party to drop Bailey, with one major party donor highlighting that Sean just doesn't have it. Being a politician doesn't come naturally to him. Beyond just this lack of confidence, his statements have definitely ruffled more than a few feathers, with him being accused of portraying the worst kind of casual sexism and misogyny by Labour. That's because of a number of historic quotes coming back to haunt him, including remarks about young girls deliberately becoming pregnant and good-looking girls sleeping around. The claim that society needs to stop thinking that single parenthood is acceptable, to even racist insults thrown at the current mayor, and the assertion that Hindu and Muslim festivals turned Britain into a crime-ridden cesspool. Safe to say that this hasn't gone down well with many Londoners, even those who would ordinarily support a Tory candidate. In terms of substantive policy, Bailey is standing on a platform of giving London a fresh start. This involves hiring 8,000 new police officers, reopening 38 police stations, setting up 32 new youth centres, building 100,000 new homes for £100,000 each, fixing TfL's finances, funding the repairs to Hammersmith Bridge, the scrapping of the extension of the ultra-low emission zone, as well as the reversal of an increase in council tax. Some of these policies will invariably be popular with voters, and we're not saying that past comments make him completely unelectable, but this clearly has put a strain on his campaign, making his support from even within his own party weaker, and his election much less likely. There are, however, notable smaller candidates, specifically climate change sceptic and brother of Jeremy Corbyn, Piers Corbyn, anti-woke activist and former actor Lawrence Fox, and YouTuber and friend of the channel Max Fosh. Actually, as I mentioned up front, there's more of these unusual candidates than ever, something that may interestingly be driven by COVID, as candidate Max Fosh explained to us earlier this week. So normally, to become a mayoral candidate, you need to find 10 voters who are on the electoral register from all 32 boroughs in London plus the City of London. So normally, that would be 330 signatures in which they sign and you get their electoral number, you hand it into City Hall along with your £10,000 and say, I would like to be a mayor nominee. That's what happens normally. With COVID, they wanted to reduce the amount of contact that campaigning teams were doing. So they reduced that number from 10 to 2. So I then needed to find just 60, what, 60... Uh, six signatures from people that was I thought that I think I think I could do that with my so online following and, and um, I reckon I can do that and if it had been 10 do you think that would have put you off would that have stopped you from doing it I think that yeah I think that would have been enough to put me off I really do think that would have been enough to put me off anyway that's enough from Max until we release the full interview on Sunday and it's also enough hypotheticals who's actually set to win well, the picture has been pretty clear and decisive since polling began. Sadiq Khan is probably going to win. 
Even since the election's postponement, a series of polls have been commissioned by the likes of Queen Mary, The Evening Standard and Redfield and Wilton. Again, all of them show an in excess of 20 percentage point lead for Khan, with him in four separate polls, gaining enough votes to win on first preference votes alone. So it looks like Khan is still popular with Londoners, at least more popular than the candidates up against him. And while polling can never guarantee a result, things are looking pretty comfortable for him in this election. We'll continue to cover this race as it plays out. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell for more updates. Also, if you want early access to our conversation with Max Fosh, then you can head over to our Patreon, where we very regularly share videos early. The link to that is in the description.